So hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great day, great weekend, long weekend, wherever you are, whatever you may be doing. 50 pips rocking and rolling 21st of Jan 2019. So what's going on? No trade calls or recommendations or response for their own stuff. So um, interesting week as we go again, again, we've had the uh, China data out, no big surprise in terms of what people were expecting. But essentially this week we have the uh, BOJ outlook and a monetary policy statement with a press conference, which of course everybody's gonna be very, very interested to see. And on Thursday, we have a bunch of data, but especially we have Super Mario in the house, so with the ECB. So we'll have to see if they stay dovish or if they're not as dovish as the market expects, at which point we could see um, a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction. But let's look at the charts. So, um, yes. Uh, let's look at the major markets and then some of the forks. But basically, we've made it all the way back up into pretty much this uh, 2700 range, right? And I was having a discussion with uh, with somebody and, and I said it was a little bit of a silly move last week. And the question was, hey, 50, why, why silly, right? Isn't it, um, couldn't it just be a healthy retracement now? I want to quant quantify that or qualify that because I think it's an interesting question, right? Why why do we feel it's a little bit of a silly move? Well, the move per se, it makes absolute sense, right? So you see what's happened. We come back down after we'd been um, moving very, very aggressively off the election, right? Uh, we had that little bit of a wobble and then we printed new highs at which the market started to correct in a, in a fairly uh, nice fashion, right? We got to move back down, retrace back about 50%, and then we puked. Now, in the same way that the move was a little bit silly to the upside, this last part of the move here was a little bit silly because it was, you know, in the low liquidity holiday into the end of the, into Christmas holiday. So, but this whole rotation back down, right, was very, very pure as it came all the way back down into this 200 week moving average. And then it bounced. Now from here, a correction all the way back into the 50 back zone of A to B and into the two moving averages, which is the 50 and the 100 week moving average after having bounced the 200 makes absolute sense, right? There's nothing wrong with that move. And we'd actually talked about the possibility of this happening about, especially if this was the start of a bear market, that corrections can be very aggressive. So that's completely line. What we felt a little bit silly was the way it happened, right? So you can see here, we've had essentially no down ticks at all all green closes every single week and what is being suspicious is not only the ramp on far from spectacular liquidity the fact that this is happening in such an aggressive fashion right so the velocity of the move on this kind of liquidity especially in a scenario where you know you've got you you know earnings aren't getting any better growth is slowing um, we're late cycle, et cetera, et cetera, right? And on top of it, we still have an awful lot of uncertainty across the board out of Washington. Uh, government's still shut down. It doesn't look like they're going to come for a uh, resolution. And you're getting all these suspicious headlines. By the way, you know, Trump came out and said that it wasn't true that he was considering uh, easing tariffs. But the whole, you know, the nature of these ramps where the market is just hovering, it can't get any traction. If you look at it intraday, it's very clear. It's kind of hovering. Then all of a sudden you get selling at the end of the day. Then you get some kind of headline. It pops back up. Then miraculously, suspiciously, we get those headlines coming right on uh, on OPEX week, right? So it, 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 it's just very, very suspicious. So I think the move is just qualified, in our opinion, as silly because of the velocity because of the timing, time of day, because of the fact that the majority of the moves came on those um, on two, three days, uh, because of the fact that it's happening in a deteriorating economic uh, 
um, environment because there's still a lot of uncertainty across the board, et cetera, et cetera. But I wanted to qualify that in saying that the, the, the move where it is, it's, it, you know, it's, it makes sense. So going into the week, what are we looking for? Well, here, uh, the way you, you see how these levels pretty much, you know, in a sloppy fashion, but the 50 back, the 61, 0.8 and the 78% retracement line up with 2,800, 2,700, 2,600. So it makes it easy. We, I wouldn't even bother having the FIB on the chart. And essentially, this is what we're looking for. Day closes below, sorry, above the 2,700. Then there's a very good chance in the same way we said last week, if we get those day closes above the 2600 and this 100, there's very little. It's likely just going to squeeze up unless we get a headline into the 27. Well, it's the same mechanic. If we get a day close above the 27, then we would not be surprised to see it squeeze very aggressively back into the 2800. And then that becomes the bull bear line. And if we can't break this 27, then 26 attracts, and that is the bull bear line for the week. Um, we would not, it is just a tricky area, would not be surprised to see this completely uh, uh, rug pull, would not be surprised to see this rip all the way back up in the 28. We just have to be very, very patient, very, very cautious and understand that both the bull and the bear case um, make sense here. I would just see it as choppy trading inside 2700, 2600. And that will likely guide us for the next 100 point move to the upside or the downside. But uh, here, if this is going to be a pure technical move down, it's really important that sellers step in here. So that's ES. Second of all, um, crude. What's going on on crude? Well, crude is another very, very interesting piece of the puzzle. And we discussed this in detail. And basically what we were focusing on was were, were a couple of things, right? So um, why don't I recognize the chart? Let me just go here. Okay, here we go. There's our crude chart. It's on a different template. 100 and 200. So basically here what we what we were saying is that it's really important for the bulls to recapture that 200 week moving average and that on the close above that then we we would see the rationale to get long tactically for a move back into the 55 level. And uh, basically, that's it's kind of stalling ahead of there, right? So this is going to be a really, really big test this week as we've got a, a really big decision to make, right? Is this going to retrace similar to the ES a lot more and possibly come back into the 60s, at which point that will be the bull bear line for the next move? Or are the sellers trying to step in? Now, if you look at it on the daily, you see that there was a first attempt here, the sellers to step in. And this was a very, you know, this was lining up across the board, right? If you're looking at the action on the ES, the action on the, uh, on the NASDAQ, across the board on a lot of the ETFs. And then we got those headlines coming up and we just ripped higher. So right now, <laughs> even though this is a very choppy area, it's hard to get bearish, right? Unless we close back below the 50 DMA or unless we get back below the 200 week, right? As it's staying big. So I think it's the same thing. As much as this, you'd have to continue to consider the possibility of more squeeze to the upside. And for those questions coming in about shorting, in the same way I wouldn't have tried to get long as long as we held below this 200 I you know right here you you want to see it below and likely if it moves back below this 200 then if you look at these highs it's going to give you a very nice level to play again with your stop so you know where you're wrong to play the downside but as long as it's holding above this 200 there's very little edge and you can see it and, and again you can see it here the squeeze right market comes in tries to keep the pressure on and a previous 
resistance is acting as support and it's trying to rotate higher off of this. And especially if we start to trade back above these 55s, then that 100, that 200, those 60s are going to come calling. So we'll have to see, but this is still very, very choppy range. You see how much time it's spent here and then ultimately it's sell off, sold off. So, you know, just have to be um, a little bit patient here. In terms of uh, GC, so gold, what's happening on gold? Let's see if we'll load the chart. So here we go. And um, still hovering around, not doing much. But you see essentially a lot of people getting hung up about getting very, very um, aggressive one way or the other. But essentially, look at this. You know, we've spent this is uh, one, two, three weeks stuck in this range, right? It's not moving. So clearly, if you look at it on the weekly, well, as we said, it looks like it's got to pull off a little bit. The question is, is it going to come back into here, into the moving averages and bounce? Is it going to come back all the way into the 1250? I think it's a very choppy zone. And remember, sometimes the thing you have to consider, sometimes we correct sideways. But here, there's just much to do about nothing. You see, we're still stuck inside these. this candle is still holding it. So the way I'd look at it is if we get a daily close outside of this tight range we've been in for about three weeks, then I'd expect 2,500, sorry, 1,250 to come calling. If we break to the upside, then I'd expect that big squeeze to 1,350. Still think all these moves lower here are potential interesting swing buys because you're going to have a lot of confluence of these previous resistance of the 20, 1,250 level. You've got all these moving averages coming in here. So I think this is probably going to be an interesting buy for the next leg of the move higher. But right now it's just huge, 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 huge choppy range. And uh, so uh, ZBs, let's do the five major markets before we look at some forks. What's happening on the ZBs? Well, the ZBs, is, they're just kind of still stuck at this um, pivotal level, not doing much, right? The market's just a little bit in a stall mode. And we continue to use these uh, 145 30s, 145 20s as... Um, as the bull bear line, either for a move back into the 40s or a move back into the 50s. I think you've got five bucks either side here, but it's it's a very choppy range. We'll have to see what the um, what the equities do. And uh, so ES DXY. Let's do the DXY. So what's happening on the DXY? DXY here. We 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 got our correction back into the 200. And you see how we just pulled right back off and, and came into this 96.00 and then broke it, hit the 200, supported here on the daily, and it's trying to rotate back higher. So here you've got two, two groups of people, right? Those that are saying, okay, this is it. Um, this was just the little healthy retracement back into the 200. We've come all the way back down. This is held, and we're going to continue to rotate higher. This is going to pop back above the moving averages. You'll have the 50, the 100, and the 200 will be smack in line with uh, with one another again. And we have to retest higher. And another group of people that are saying, no, 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 this is just uh, this is a big topping process. We had a big fail here. And even though we could get choppy and stay bid, ultimately we're coming all the way back down to the 22s because we're putting in a very big topping pattern. Um, we've discussed this in a lot of detail, so I'm not going to go through the whole discussion, our whole view on the DXY here. But uh, suffice to say is that this 96 is the pivotal level above. And there's clearly a risk that this is going to try and squeeze all the way back into the 98s below. Then we think those 92 60s are coming into play. Uh, if you look at it from... Um, a weekly perspective or any other time frame, uh, I don't feel it's any clearer. It's any clearer here. It just feels like we're in a wait and see mode where the equities have been ripping, but all the other asset classes haven't necessarily been joining in. So we just have to be um, we just have to be very, very patient around these levels. Now, 
going back into some of the the forex charts and i'm going to do it here so they'll be blank hopefully so we don't have the markings we had to just to have a little bit of a oh no they're coming in the markings well some of them are coming in so where are we and what's going on on the euro now the big question is is draghi or the ecb are they going to be as dovish as um the market is is pricing in or is the market is expecting or are they going to be a little bit less dovish right because if you look at it from the bigger picture you still have this pattern trying to play out right and this is what the the bears are holding on to i still think that all things being equal the way this is trading it's far more interesting to look for longs in this area and short in this area then try and get stubborn short here we'll have to see how this trades we still have some swing trades so that hasn't hasn't really changed so i think the only thing i'd want to add here on euro is that where we are right now in terms of asymmetry in terms of opportunity remains a very interesting long zone but if we break down and if that comes in with a lot of uh, news flow and some concrete things happening, things could get ugly very, very quickly on Euro. So clearly um, the levels remain the same. It's really about how we behave uh, around this uh, 1300 mark. And if the market is able to attract new sellers at lows, because for now, all we've seen is that any probe lower inside this area, <clears throat> the market hasn't been able to attract new sellers. It's just been attracting buying or covering, right? So that's that's where we stand on, on the euro. Um, Aussie and Kiwi, again, there's been a little bit of a stall. And as we said, what's really tricky is that it, it's, it's hard to read too much into it, really, right? It's really hard to read too much into the chart because it, it's not going anywhere. It just looks like it's 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 buying some time. Now, just like Euro or just like all the other charts, it, it, we're in a situation where both the bulls and the bears can make a fairly decent case here. And that's why I think it's it's tricky, right? Because it's hard to have a lot of conviction either side. Here you could easily say that the downtrend is continuing forget this uh fundamentals economic situation in australia is, a, is going to be a disaster housing market etc and the downtrend is going to continue and we're going to see new lows you could easily say that essentially we're still building a base here and we have to go and retest higher right it just all goes back to that um, dxy chart I think it's exactly the same thing as euro. The, 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 the proof is in the pudding, right? And can it attract new sellers in this area if we get there, right? Yeah, I, I think fundamentally that this is still, um, still has unresolved business to the downside, but maybe this is not the time to look for that. Maybe this zone shorter term is more interesting for longs. I don't have a particularly uh, strong view either side. NZD USD, it's a very, very similar chart, right? We're still stuck here. Actually, the basing looks a little bit more constructive on Kiwi, but you see it's the same thing. We're still holding, remember we had those longs off this zone. We're still holding this rotation. So you could easily argue that we're still in trend and this has got a probe lower, or you could argue that it's trying to, to base right it's trying it's trying to form some kind of a sloppy base in this area but uh, when you, when you've got these big levels right and it's just very very difficult i find to have very very strong conviction either side and um yen usd jpy here we're coming back to this area. If you, actually, if we, we look at yen, we remember there were a, a couple of interesting zones and what we'd been trading and what we'd been focused around was essentially that break of the, of the 110, right? And here, what it looks like is it looks like the market is uh, 
is trying desperately to clip some stops on this 110. And this is likely going to be the key to hold this uh, little correction off this mini flash crash, right? Is the 110 going to hold and then we see some more downside? Or is the 110 going to give and then we'd assume we'd see 112s come into play? Right here, you've got 110, 112, 114. Those have been the key level that the market has been looking at. So see, it's very similar to equities. It's key that the market can hold this level here if it's going to continue the most recent move down. Or if not, it looks like the squeeze is on and we're going to see a lot more upside. Again, I, I wish it was um, it was clear. We can't complain. We've had decent moves. This is just a wait and see phase. But a lot of things could be lining up. But clearly, um, the opportunity lies on the, in terms of asymmetry, in terms of potential move, lies in the equity space, not necessarily in, in Forex where we stand here. Uh, cable, we came right back up into the sell zone. Remember what we said before when the vote is rotating high and we said uh, we'd be looking to get long on a move lower into these wicks. So the long zone and then the the short zone was into the descending trend line and the 200. So that held that area quite nicely. Now the question is, is this the hold on panic? Now, I think the way this is playing is technically this looks like it's unable to attract new sellers. It looks like there's buyers on any dips. And it looks like this on any move lower into the 128, which is the bull bear line, is a buy for a breakout high or at least all the way back into the 132s, 133s. The problem here is that you've got the headline risk because on any ugly headline, then you know, you're going to get another one of these uh, of these pukes. Right. So I think it's a very difficult one to trade and it's very tricky because it's hard to size your positions um, on any swing because you have to deal with that headline risk, because even if you have stops in, you can get slipped. You have no idea what happens. <clears throat> so the sizing has to be that you want to get very, very small, but then it's too small and it doesn't really it's not worth it. it it's tricky. So probably these are kind of trades that are much better much more interesting to express through the options market than on spot. We'll have to see, but right here, all, all we can see is that essentially we're kind of stuck with this descending trend line and the overhead support of that and the 200 coming into play, but that, you know, buyers are there on any dips, but this can flip on a dime on a news, uh, on a headline. So again, not a lot of, uh, um, not a lot of edge not a lot of edge unless you're trying to trade some of these levels intraday but holding overnight on a swing is tricky so that's pretty much where we are i think the other thing you really want to keep an eye out for this week is is um well we're going to have all those tech earnings coming in we're going to but financials have been key right and you see it's the same chart across the board but these financials are key look at um you know the the all those charts like City, Goldman, Morgan, they all have gaps, right, from the earnings. And the big question, let's see if we have it here. Yeah, right. So you've got all these open gaps for the earnings, right? So as long as these are gap gap and runs, the market is probably going to stay very, very gung-ho, right? Morgan, Citigroup. But watch out because if these start to get heavy and they fill their gaps, right, then, then the flow could really, really change. But you see it's a similar kind of scenario here. We're coming right back down and it's the velocity of the move has been aggressive, but it's fairly healthy, right? So this could easily just be this broader move down and then we get some very aggressive selling coming in. And that's also going to be depend on the economic data, right? What's going to happen also on the shutdown? Because keep in mind, all this shutdown, we're not getting any data. It's not doing any good to the economy. So then afterwards, we might get a bunch of data, which is not so good, hit all the same time, or God knows what happens with this shutdown. So as much as the longs are accelerating, you have to understand that the more we squeeze in a cocaine angel kind of ramp with only positive closes with no down tick, you know, the less edge you have in trying to get long, right? 
You can understand here on these bounces to be aggressive to the long side. But what's also interesting, as happens in most of these cases, is you got little kind of participation here. Also here you see on Twitter, on the news, everybody's still, oh, the world's going to end. And recently when we're getting right into the overhead resistance, everybody's getting uber bullish. So you know what that spells, right? And it's the same thing on... Um, if you look at the transfer, it's just the same kind of uh, kind of scenario, right? We're ramping back up, but we're getting into overhead resistance. Or if you look at some of the junk, it just looked like a massive, massive, massive squeeze on high yield, right? And this also, you know, like good like was saying, any rally here is a good is a gift from the gods to get out for the shorts to get out of these trades. But this is an important chart. Look at the way this is trading. This is just a massive little squeeze, but it's coming right back into the key breakdown zone. And now you've got this descending trend line. You've got all the moving averages coming back down. So this is really we, we've reached the, the you know, the moment on truth. But. If you're looking for healthy markets and if you're looking for healthy moves, even though we might still have some upside, really it should be going into this week and going into the earnings. We've also got the Fed blackout period, <clears throat> buyback blackout period. You, it would make sense to look for fading these recent moves in high yield, in, uh, in, in, in the financials, in, uh, in the equities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's pretty much where we are. Uh, this is a little bit of a long update and a little bit of a ramble, but I think it was worth going through these things just to also to highlight the, uh, the context. Have an awesome one. Thank you for flying with 50, guys. Take care.